Hey guys and welcome back to the war where last time another three the leader of the KSSR decided that he had the audacity to come along and attack my diplomatic heartland the KSC2. So of course we have to do something about that we indeed have to go and take that base back fortunately when another three was performing his attack despite some instability issues uh, given by my turrets i.e. the moment they got into load range they just exploded which turns out that we found out in a stream was going to happen regardless i went to the save file that i passed on to the other guys i had a look inside there went and focused on my turrets and it exploded even when it did that i thought there might be some instability in the legs and that would force it into the ground and that would make it explode or something like that but no it just exploded for no apparent reason at all this ended up just being a mild inconvenience though because it turns out another three likes to put his centre of lift right on top of his centre of mass making his plane entirely unstable and whilst trying to position round for a landing managed to backflip and crash into the mountains around the KSC2 which was nice. And so this brings us to my first action of my turn and a small explanation of a small rule change that has happened on the change of this turn. It used to cost five parts to place a Kerbal down into a cockpit. This was because of their numerous advantages over probe cores, their unhackability, the fact that you don't need to charge them with electricity. And this of course naturally led the players to favour probe cores over Kerbals. But there was a small outcry in the comments and I totally empathise with what you guys are saying here. It's a lot easier to get behind the guys in the cockpit if they are actually a person. You can form a connection a lot better with a name than you can with a serial number. So from this present moment forward, Kerbals will only cost a single part as you do actually need to spend an additional part to put down the cockpit, thus me making them more expensive than the standard probe core anyway. And with that in mind, at 0800 hours this morning, President Rump signed an executive order authorising Captain Casa to go forth and to reclaim the KSC-2. It currently is not under our control as we have no material at the base at the moment, but just planting my plane down in this audacious manner is all that needs to happen to bring this base back under my control. Coming into this turn, I had a measly four territories under my control. This of course means I only had 40 parts to play with, 30 of which went into the plane and Kerbal, leaving me a whopping 10 parts for base defense. So I went ahead and stole a trick or two from my current enemy at the moment, the KSSR, and built myself a five part turret. I'm not really expecting these turrets to be super effective. I'm really just expecting them to be more of an annoyance so people can't just walk in and take this base much like I just did. I am a little worried about the deployment of the second turret here. You can see it is more than a little off kilter. The horizontal is not horizontal. Uh, this is just a problem with the launch pad I've launched it onto. And obviously, having only given it five parts, I have no way of moving it. So uh, I'm sure it will work out fine. Welcome to the News at Six. I'm your host, Kimamaya Kerbal. The USK continue their aggression against the Echelon of Iron Core. In some kind of unholy union, Zedtech also aggresses against the Echelon of Iron Core. Outmanned and outgunned, the command center of the Echelon of Iron Core flee to outer space. After an unsuccessful attack on Frankenmoyoin, the KSSR decide to pick on small, tiny, neutral nation Dawn Behold only to have it snatched from him moments later by the brave armies of the SRYO. A violent rebel uprising at Sandy Island loses Gregorstan control of that territory. For this turn only. And now for my second set of actions, this time enacting the will of the people of Frankenmuyen, of course. Last time I asked you guys to vote in a straw poll to try and determine what our set of actions was gonna be this time. After an overwhelming number of responses, actually like four or five times the number of people voted last week than I ever thought possible. After an overwhelming number of votes, we have to go and take over Green Coast. The only problem with Green Coast is there appears to be no defenses out there at this present moment in time. 
having been completely abandoned by the echelon of Iron Core, all his bases have t had all their defensive turrets taken down, scrapped for their part value, and he appears to have drifted off towards the stars. Whilst this plan means wonders for the strategic heads of the Echelon, it does kind of leave me with a bit of a boring turn if I was just to enact that first vote there. So I am also going to enact vote number two, the second choice of the people. I'm going to continue my attack on Arkibo. Now, because of the part restrictions and the fact that I made a plane here, I'm not actually going to be able to claim Arkibo as it's only has a heli helipad there's nowhere for me to land this plane but i can definitely deal out some damage and provide a bit of a thorn in the side for another three on my way in i did some pretty severe maneuvers to try and blow off some speed because of course if you come in too fast kerbal can sometimes get the position of the ships uh, that aren't the main vessel wrong and end up sp uh, spawning it inside the ground and then all sorts of explosive fun happens and that is not how I want to win this fight no the way I want to win this fight is by strategic bombardment so right now what we're doing is we're waiting for the vessel to be loaded you can see we're about 4.6 kilometers away and we're, that should have come up a lot earlier we actually have distant vehicle enhancement on so that we could see vehicles that are far away but still that would not load until we were like four kilometers up so i've got a feeling something might not be working as intended there i will probably try and have a word with the other guys and see if we can't get the uh, object enhancement upgraded or something but anyway i have taken a gps lock after it did manage to load and now i need to go around and try and get myself into an advantageous position for a bombing run of course the theory of this is to open up your bomber bomb bay doors come and fly up with a nice straight approach making sure everything is nicely lined up and then just when the two circles cross over hit your fire button now for some reason the fire button just didn't want to work for me i'm not entirely sure why i i stopped i ended up having a look in menus double checking that everything was set up and configured correctly so uh i must have put it down to just being an issue of lag when i was pressing the button was in between frames or something like that i will give you a taste of the frame rate in a second we are currently at something like 2000 percent at the moment which is a ridiculous amount of speed up let me tell you but here we I'm coming in for my second run. I'm feeling a little bit more confident about this one. So once again, in position, I'm going to open up my Bombay doors and we are going to try and attempt to overlap these two circles here. Flying in, we are currently at about 600% um time acceleration here that is six times normal speed and still the frame rate is quite painful here the whole time around this area i was having a bad time sometimes dropping down to a measly four frames per second that was of course until i did this particular maneuver here now i was having trouble dropping my bombs as i say so i decided that probably the best way to do it would be using the fire missile button on the menu because for some reason that is more reliable uh, at picking up the input than it is with the fire button just a quick check to make sure it works it did indeed grab the other bomb and fire that as well and let them run down i also thought it might be a good idea to then think about how i can use some mavericks in this fight mavericks of course being under missile power having a thrust behind them they're gonna get there a little bit quicker than the bombs were they were mainly sent out as a distraction from the bombs because the bombs they have this habit of being blown up before they get anywhere near the target much like this singular hellfire did here but wouldn't you know the things that i sent out just as a distraction were good enough to make it through and blow him up there i love being able to watch that missile come in on the targeting screen there and absolutely devastate everything i think that's one of the best things about the new bda armory we're turning around now and having a look at the bombs behind me just because i want to know what's gonna happen now seems like the perfect time to make good on that promise of showing you guys the frame rate now as you can see here this is just crawling along it actually got worse when i blew that turret up so i thought this would be the time to show you the absolute peak of the horrors and this is why i go through at a 
astounding acceleration rate when I'm doing the editing because th this is just painful. It literally took me about two and a half hours to record the 45 minutes worth of action. But as you can see, the bomb actually impacted with the hill beforehand, meaning that during this entire series of the war, I have never managed to lay down an aggressive bomb outside of a simulated experience. Crazy. And then, because the frame rate is so bad, I try and run through a few things to try and sort it out. First is to obviously stop the recording. Second, I tried deleting all the parts from our Kibo. All of these things actually didn't help. And so we find ourselves 80 kilometers away from Green Coast, right on the very edge of the Arkibo Basin. I presume that's what we're going to call the massive crater that is on the other side of the planet from the KSC. This is, of course, is where mine, the KSSR, and the Echelon Corps lands are all meeting in a nexus of hostility and war, which is actually this border that I am crossing right now. So I'm starting to uh, zigzag back and forth, trying to lose some speed, because there are two things Things that are detrimental to coming in for a nice landing. The first one is having too much altitude and the second is having too much speed. Both of these things will mean that you overshoot the runway by a prestigious amount and have incredible difficulty trying to get your wheels on the floor without hitting the ground far too hard and exploding, which is a a, a very common thing for me, a very common thing. After looking around and making my um, camera absolutely go nuts, well, I was looking for the sun there so I could see where my shadow would be so I could get some sort of feeling of how far off the ground I am. I could not actually make that work. So we are coming in nice and low. You can see the shadow does actually just come in there. Gives me a rough idea how far away I am. And I'm just constantly easing back my throttle. I'm looking to almost fall out of the the air as I cross the threshold of the runway. Unfortunately, I overshoot a little bit. There is a small explosion and we skid uncontrollably down the runway, but the only thing I blew up was a Hellfire missile. I have not lost any integrity of this plane, so I'm going to say that was actually a successful landing. I roll down a little bit towards the air traffic control hangar so that I've got enough room when I turn around to be able to take off and set this plane up on the automatic guard pilot. As you know, any plane would be. And I hereby claim Green Coast as is the will of my people. And so, finally, we just have a small administrational point to take care of. Uh, ZTech turned around to me and went, Hey, dude, I have changed all my craft into rovers, you know, just by name only. And this means that all we need to do is sort by rovers in the tracking station, and then we can find his stuff. And I was like, dude, that is genius. I hereby select landers. And so I'm going around uh, changing all my craft into landers. This gives a wonderful backdrop to remind all of you that... Next turn's actions are entirely in your hands. If you look down in the description of this here video, you will find a link at the very top of the doobly-doo. This will take you to a straw poll where I have pre-selected a few outcomes that I want you, the people of Franco Moyoin, to decide on what we are going to do next. And that leaves me just to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. If you have enjoyed this, let me and the rest of YouTube know with a like. That would be very helpful thank you and if you have any tactical advice please do drop it in the comments below don't forget to vote in the poll and if you thought this content was especially good and would like this channel to have a more secure future going into the future then your patronage on patreon would be very much appreciated this of course would be the perfect place to thank all my patrons you guys really do make all this happen Everyone's name is currently running up on the screen. If you want to become one of the people on this list, just click the link above their names. Thank you very much, guys, and bye!